This is the OTB Network. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses, brought to you by Parting Glass Racing. I'm Jean Wood. We've had a nice weekend of racing, fortunately. Not any real complications related to weather. Had some good racing on the East Coast, as well as wrapping up of the Santa Anita winter meet for this year. We'll start things off down in Florida, where Gulfstream is still running. It, uh, it seems like it's running a little bit later this year, but uh, with Keeneland opening a little bit early, we did have a bit of an overlap because of the shift in the calendar. We'll head down to Gulfstream Park now. Three-year-old fillies on the turf in Saturday afternoons, Boynton Beach. They're racing in the Boynton Beach. Worst case scenario, right out to the front. And then it's Bet on the Blue and Dant Echo in the rough away, running in fourth to the outside. Sea Road is next. Mendy and Dream to Dream along the rail. Worst case scenario. Leads the way into that first turn and is able to clear from that far outside post and leads the way by a length. Bet on the Blue second. Dant Echo steadied momentarily there. In the rough is fourth on the outside. Right behind them is Sea Road and then Mendy and Dream to Dream. 24 and 2 was the quarter. On to the back stretch. Worst case scenario. The leader by a length and a half. Outside, it's Dant Echo. Bet on the blue, third along the rail. Sea Road goes up between horses. In the rough is right there to the outside. Mendy is taken far outside now, and it's four lengths off the lead as they continue up the back stretch. Dream to Dream, six lengths behind. Front running, worst case scenario, who ran a 49 and one half. Worst case scenario, three quarters of a length. Into the far turn, Dant Echo is second. And then it's in the rough in third. On the rail, bet on the blue. Mendy on the far outside progressing. Sea Road is well in it too. Two lengths off the lead. Dream to Dream is the trailer. It's wide open. Dant Echo on the outside. Worst case scenario. In the rough, Sea Road's going to try to squeeze through with the fence. And they're into the stretch. Worst case scenario, the leader. Sea Road through on the inside. In the rough, Dant Echo is right there. On the far outside, Mendy, and then Dream to Dream, and Bet on the Blue dashing through at the fence. Worst case scenario, Sea Road's now on the outside. Sea Road, worst case scenario, Sea Road did it. Then worst case scenario, Dream to Dream, and in the rough. Sea Road getting the victory. A very nice performance by this filly who is stepping up into Stakes Company. She's now won three in a row, starting with a maiden, then an allowance non-winners of one, and coming back right here to score in her Stakes debut by a neck over worst case scenario with 12 to 1 shot dream to dream back in the third spot in the rough the favorite in the field a little bit on the wide side and settling for fourth at 5 to 2. The winner, C. Road, you may remember from her second place finish behind eventual uh, stakes filly Rose Catherine at Belmont Park last fall. Obviously, uh, got a little bit of a uh, little bit of freshening over the winter time and has come back very, very sharp. C. Road is a dark bay or brown daughter of Tale of the Cat from Packet by Polish Navy, bred in Kentucky by R. Alex Rankin, R. Lenahan, and P. Lenahan. Owned by the Breeders and trained by Stanley Huff, ridden to victory by Joe Bravo, Sea Road covers the mile on the turf in 136.74. We'll head to Keeneland next and we'll head back to last Thursday's running of the Appalachian for three-year-old turfers. They're at the post. And they're off in the Appalachian Stakes. Orchestrator away in good order, but so is Rose Catherine toward the inside. Rose Catherine has the early lead, then Orchestrator. Go ask Alex on the extreme outside. Comes away running in third as they enter the first turn. Check the label. Goes fourth. All County fifth toward the inside as they move midway on the first turn. Rose Catherine sets the pace, leads it down toward the inside by a length onto the back stretch. Go ask Alex. Goes second by just over three lengths to Orchestrator third. Check the label is fourth. All County fifth toward the inside. Red Hot Buddha is next up on the outside, followed by 
by Bay to Bay, then a gap of five more lengths back to Cactus Cadillac, who's last 23 seconds the time for the opening quarter. And here's Go Ask Alex to draw alongside the favorite, Rose Catherine. And Rose Catherine leads it by a half length. Go Ask Alex applies mild pressure, second up on the outside. Gap of two and a half, check the label third. Orchestrator is fourth, Red Hot Buddha fifth into the far turn. All County is sixth, Bay to Bay seventh, a long way back to Cactus Cadillac, eighth and last. 46 seconds for the opening half mile. Rose Catherine is the leader. And Go Ask Alex, a half length off the lead and second midway on the far turn. Check the label, goes third up on the outside. And then Red Hot Buddha, bay to bay outside of that one. Six lengths off the lead, but Rose Catherine still the one to catch. Go Ask Alex has been there since the start. Here's Check the Label, moving by from third to second. And Check the Label to the lead at the eighth pole. Rose Catherine giving way. Bay to bay now goes to second. Final furlong of the Appalachian Stakes. Check the Label opening up on a two and a half length lead. Bay to bay still trying, but still second. Check the label and Julianne Leperu to take the Appalachian. Bay to bay home second, Rose Catherine was third and then orchestrator. Check the label gets the victory off of the uh, off of a winter time spent uh, down in Florida. Check the label had run against some pretty nice horses, including a close up fourth to Concord Kid last time out. And here comes the bride. Here scores the victory from just off the pace with a three wide bid over Bay to Bay with the aforementioned Rose Catherine completing the trifecta as the odds on choice. The winner Check the label is a dark bay or brown daughter of storm and fever from Don't Trick Her by Mazel Trick. Bred in Kentucky by Burton Jones and owned by the breeder. Trained by Graham Motion, ridden to victory by Julian Leperu. Check the label. Covers the flat mile on the turf at Keeneland, 134.87. Next up, we'll head right back to Keeneland. More midweek stakes racing, actually, actually towards the end of the week for Friday's running of the Double Dog Dare for fillies and mares. They're at the post. And they're off in the Double Dog Dare Stakes. No use denying away running for the lead from the outside. Funny Moon is there between horses. There goes Haka kicking in down toward the rail now and moving up to challenge for the top spot as well. The top three in a line across the track at the entry to the first turn. Funny Moon in between horses moves forward, has the lead down. No use denying, goes second up on the outside as Haka settles down in third. Two lengths off the lead heading onto the back stretch. And then further back, Ladies Laughter next to last. And Striking Dancer is content to trail off the first turn and onto the back stretch. 24 seconds the time for the first quarter. Funny Moon is against the rail, leads at three parts of a length. No use denying toward the outside and second by just over two. Haka goes third up the back stretch, then Ladies Laughter next to last. And Striking Dancer is fifth and last, six lengths off the lead at the midpoint of the back stretch. Funny Moon and no use denying side by side for the top spot. Two lengths to Haka, another length and a half to Ladies Laughter. And there goes Striking Dancer now being sent from fifth up to fourth on the outside. Still three and a half lengths off the lead through an opening half mile in 47 and four fifth seconds. Now they're bunching for the lead. There goes Haka, striking dancer outside of that one. And they're trying to draw alongside of Funny Moon midway on the far turn. No use denying drops back. Ladies Laughter is last. They're coming to the quarter pole. And Funny Moon still the one to get. She leads at three parts of a length. Haka between horses starts to draw alongside the leader. Striking dancer still third, caught wide around the far turn. They're turning for home. Haka alongside of Funny Moon, side by side for the lead. Haka puts ahead in front. Striking dancer third. Ladies Laughter fourth. They're coming to the eighth pole. Haka is the leader now by almost a length from Funny Moon in second. Striking Dancer still third, final furlong. And Funny Moon rallies back inside of Haka. Striking Dancer third, but Haka has the lead. Haka chased by Striking Dancer and Funny Moon. Haka takes the double dog dare for Garrett Gomez. Close for second, Striking Dancer or Funny Moon. Haka getting the win, a little bit of an upset here in a relatively short field as she scores at a $9.40 mutual over Funny Moon with the favored striking dancer back in town after having headed out to California last time out, scoring the third spot. The winner, Haka, rallied to win nicely at Santa Anita from off the pace in February, and uh, that was her prep-up race for this race. You may remember her from last wintertime when she ran a solid second behind Las Virginis winner's stardom bound. A very nice performance. She went to the sidelines in the interim, came back with that prep race, and seems to be back in form now. Funny Moon, for example, you may remember as well. This was her first run since a disappointment last summer's Alabama. The winner, Haka, 
is a bay daughter of Dinah Farmer from Duke by Mr. Prospector. Bred in Kentucky by Claiborne Farm and owned by the breeder. Trained by Christophe Clement, who slept, swept the one-two spots in the double dog dare. Garrett Gomez aboard. Haka covers the mile and a sixteenth in 144.72. We'll head into the Saturday card now at Keeneland, kicking things off. Phillies and mares sprinting in the rather oddly named Giants Causeway. They're at the post. And they're off in the Giants Causeway. There goes Canadian Ballet from the far outside. Liber Lady there toward the inside. Canadian Ballet has the early lead from Liber Lady, who moves up a closer second down next to the rail. And then Life Lessons, Silver Time, is fourth up on the outside. West Ocean, fifth as they head for the far turn. Four lengths off the lead. Avi's Destiny, sixth back toward the rail. And a gap of four more lengths back to Kadari, who is seventh and last. Up front, Liber Lady takes over the lead by a length and a half. Canadian Ballet, second by a length. Silver Time, third. Life Lesson now regains the third spot against the rail. Then West Ocean out toward the center of the course, running five lengths from the front, has to angle wide at the quarter pole. Avi's Destiny, and then Kadari last, and Liber Lady is the leader by three lengths into the stretch. West Ocean runs on from the outside, goes from fourth to third to second, coming after Liber Lady, final furlong of the Giants' causeway. Here's West Ocean to run right by and take the lead. Liber Lady now second, Silver Time to third, and then Canadian Ballet toward the inside, but it's going to be West Ocean to win the Giants Causeway. Four wins today for Javier Castellano. Liber Lady home second, Silver Time third, Canadian Ballet fourth. West Ocean gets the victory. I don't know if they had originally thought that maybe Coolmore was going to sponsor this race or maybe because Coolmore sponsors the Lexington, the next race on the card, that they would name it after one of their most prominent stallions, this race for Phillies. But West Ocean scores nicely, drawing away from off the pace. Four and three-quarter lengths, the better of Libor Lady with Silver Time finishing in the third spot. West Ocean coming in off a win last out in the Bienville at the fairgrounds is a dark bear brown daughter of elusive quality from Ocean Drive by Belong to Me. Bred in Kentucky by Saibon Racing Stable and owned by Wertheimer and Frere. Trained by Todd Fletcher, ridden the victory by Javier Castellano. West Ocean covers the five and a half on the turf in 102.23. Next up, three-year-olds in action in a mile and a sixteenth in the grade two Coolmore Lexington. They're at the post. And they're off in the Coolmore Lexington Stakes. Heavenville and XE broke alertly. Lonesome Street also crept on along with Bushwhack down toward the inside. There goes Krypton moving up from the inside starting spot to get the lead. XE goes second on the far outside. XE caught three lanes off the rail into the first turn. Lonesome Street will go in the third position. Bushwhacked fourth with a ground saving trip around the turn. Heavenville three wide in the fifth position. Call shot is sixth. The store to Dave is seventh. Kettle River is eighth on the outside. Chief Council goes ninth. Connemara tenth heading on to the back stretch. Uptown Charlie Brown is 11th and moves side by side toward the center of the track from the back with Connemara and Prince Will I am the trailer 23 and three fifth seconds for the opening quarter XE the leader by two lengths Krypton second a half length Lonesome Street third between horses Heavenville fourth on the far outside Bushwhacked fifth against the rail nearly five lengths off the lead then distorted Dave sixth down toward the inside Kettle River caught wide into the far turn in seventh call shot is eighth Chief Council ninth Uptown Charlie Brown tenth Connemara a wide 11th Prince Will I am 12th and last 46 and 4 for the opening half mile XE the leader midway on the far turn a length and a half Krypton second a length and a half Bushwhacked is third toward the inside there goes Kettle River moving up fourth on the outside and then Heavenville looks for room fifth between horses distorted Dave ridden along six down toward the rail then Chief Council Uptown Charlie Brown eight lengths off the lead XE coming to the eighth pole here's the leader by two to Krypton Bushwhacked and Kettle River distorted Dave toward the inside Chief Council and Uptown Charlie Brown final Furlong, Bushwhack trying to reel in XE, XE trying to steal it on the front end, and XE coming to the line. Uptown Charlie Brown runs on late, but XE will pull the upset for Robbie Alvarado in the Coolmore Lexington. Bushwhack then Uptown Charlie Brown and close for fourth. X-High gets the victory on the front end the same way he won the rush away 
last time out at Turfway Park at the end of March. In his prior start, he was beaten by about 15 lengths by Odysseus in a Tampa Bay allowance race. Seems to me that uh, perhaps when spotted properly, he can be very effective on the front end. He scores over the late moving Bushwhacked, who is bred to go a little bit shorter, but is stretched out quite nicely for Jonathan Shepard. Uptown Charlie Brown, who is one of the stories here going into the Coolmore Lexington as unfortunately his trainer, Alan Seawald, who had been a guest on uh, down the stretch here on the network only a few weeks back, passed away, died suddenly of a heart attack, a parent heart attack last week. So that was obviously a bit of a uh, heartstring story as Uptown Charlie Brown, a horse that has a number of partners, I believe he's got about 30 or 40 people involved in his ownership, uh, had become quite a story down at Tampa over the winter time. Here allowed to rally from off the pace as is his best running style, he completes the trifecta. The winner XI is a bay son of Maria's mom from Soldera by Polish Numbers. Bred in Kentucky by Wertheimer and Frere and owned by the Breeder, trained by Todd Pletcher and ridden to victory by Robbie Alvarado. XI covers the mile in the 16th on the Keeneland Poly Track in 144.38. Next up, we'll head right back to Keeneland, grade three older horses in Sunday's running of the Ben Ali. They're at the post. And they're off in the Ben Ally. Big Top comes out running for the lead. Dubious Miss is right alongside in the opening strides. There goes Timber Reserve out in the center of the racetrack and Kiss the Kid comes away running in the fourth position. Dubious Miss has the lead at the entry into the first turn and now starts to angle over toward the inside rail. Timber Reserve goes second up on the outside. Big Top is shuffled back into the third position. Kiss the Kid fourth on the outside. Ready, set is fifth. Palladio sixth on the outside just over five lengths off the early lead followed by Giant Oak who is side by side at the back along with just as well just as well moves up one spot from last down toward the inside 24 and two fifth seconds the time for the opening quarter dubious miss timber reserve the top two separated by just a neck another length and a half to kiss the kid in third palladio fourth up on the outside and then big top back toward the rail in the fifth position ready set sixth in between those two giant oak goes seventh on the outside and just as well eighth down toward the rail and running five lengths off the lead into the far turn 48 seconds the time for the first half mile Mile. Dubious Miss is the leader by a half length into the turn. Timber Reserve is second by a length and a half. Kiss the Kid goes third a half length. Palladio fourth on the outside. Then Giant Oak who angles out toward the center of the track in fifth. Ready, set is sixth. And then at the top of the stretch, Big Top next to last and just as well is still absolutely last. Looking for room toward the inside. A quarter mile to come. Dubious Miss chased off the far turn by Kiss the Kid from in between. Horses, Giant Oak down the far outside. And here comes Giant Oak running after Dubious Miss. And then Kiss the Kid in between those two. Just as well fourth on the grandstand side. But Dubious Miss has the lead by three at the 16th pole. Kiss the Kid, then Giant Oak. It is Dubious Miss and Cal. Alvin Burrell to take the Ben Ally. Kiss the Kid was home second. Giant Oak was third, just as well finished fourth. That's Dubious Miss getting his victory three for three at Keeneland. He is the horse for the course here. He scores at just under five to two over Kiss the Kid with Giant Oak back in the third spot. The winner, Dubious Miss, is 8 for 19 lifetime, was second on the turf at the fairgrounds and the fairgrounds handicap a couple of, uh, or last time out rather, in a prep up race for this. Not a bad performance coming back to his favorite racetrack. Dubious Miss is a dark bay or brown gelded son of E. Dubai from Crypto Clover by Mountain Cat. Bred in Kentucky by David P. Holloway, owned by David P. Holloway Racing and trained by Paul McGee, ridden to victory by Calvin Burrell, Dubious Miss. Covers the nine furlongs in 149.60. We'll pause for a brief break, and when we return, we'll be heading to Charlestown for a series of four pretty nice stakes races on Saturday evening. Please stay with us.
back to horses and courses. We'll continue now at Charlestown, where they ran four pretty nice stakes races on Saturday night, kicking things off. We had three and up going four and a half furlongs in the Web Snyder. Here at a gate. And they're off in a racing in the Web Snyder stakes. Off slowly was Joey P. You'll spot him a good six lengths. From the inside, here comes the Jackal. On the far outside, Truster Bust. Up between horses, Jiu-Jitsu Jacks challenges. Up the rail, see Dubai in fourth. Then in fifth comes Taken. Then Love to the Max. And at the back, Joey P can see them all. They head to the end at Charlestown turn. On the far outside, Truster Bust. A nostril in front of the Jackal. Almost three and a half lengths back to Jiu-Jitsu Jack. And to the outside is Taken fourth. Down along the inside, see Dubai. And Love to the Max. Joey P will need some racing room. He's got a about eight to make up, and on the inside, it's still the Jackal now with the lead, taking it away from Prostor Bust. Back in third is Jiu Jitsu Jax. Nothing from Joey P tonight. It's the Jackal. Here comes Jiu Jitsu Jax, splitting horses and getting up at the wire to defeat Trustor Bust. Back in third is the Jackal, and up for fourth was Love to the Max. The unofficial winning time 51 flat. Jiu Jitsu Jax getting the victory by a head, a close finish. It was a head back to Truster Bust with the Jackal back in the third spot and a good a close three horse finish. Jiu Jitsu Jax, a seven for 15 lifetime. He's won three here at Charlestown, was fifth in his return race last time out off an October layoff. That obviously gave him enough fitness to be ready for this one. He scores second time back off the layoff. Jiu-Jitsu Jiu Jax is a Bay four-year-old son of Tiger Ridge from Carol's and More by Two Punch Bread in Florida by West Point Thoroughbreds and owned by Robert Cole Jr., trained by Scott Lake and ridden to victory by J.D. Acosta. Jiu-Jitsu Jax covers the four and a half in 51.12. We will stretch it out to two turns while staying sprinting seven furlongs next up for three-year-olds in the blue and gold. Trying to get the 10 settled down. And they're off and racing in the blue and gold stakes. Down towards the inside, Confidence Crisis breaks alertly for the lead. Alongside is Comadero. And out in the center of the track, that is Toboggan Slide in third. Up into fourth comes Ken's Cape. And down towards the inside, Lion Attack. Escrow Kid is three wide of that group. Then we drop back another length and a half to Plantation down along the rail. Joined by Silver Pioneer. And the last one around the turn will be proud of midway the quarter 23 and one fifth second on the inside confidence crisis kendrick carmouche at 12 to 1 holds the lead right alongside Comadero and Robbie Alvarado putting the pressure on the front runner. There's almost three lengths back to Toboggan Slide sitting third. Up into fourth comes Ken's Cape. Down along the rail, Lion Attack. Two more back to Escrow Kit. Then comes Plantation, followed by Silver Pioneer and Proud of Midway trying to mount a drive. Some 14 from the back. A half 46 and one fifth second. And now Comadero lets it out. Robbie Alvarado takes off on the lead. Here comes Toboggan Slide. Walter Legas now coming after him in second. Back in third will be Ken's Cape and from way back Plantation Travis Dunkelberger will come three wide at the top of the stretch but Cole Madero's got something in the tank and pulls away at the furlong pole. Robbie Alvarado is going to get his win here tonight at Charlestown by seven or eight here in the end. Toboggan slide a clear cut second and Plantation runs third. Rounding off the super will be Ken's Cape. The unofficial winning time 123 and two fifth seconds. Comadero gets the victory. This is a pretty nice three-year-old sprinter, and over the last few years, some very nice horses have come out of some of the uh, some of the, the Pennsylvania and West Virginia programs. Amongst them, uh, a horse like like Fabulous Strike, who has been a very very good sprinter. Comadero looks like a pretty interesting horse. He's six for seven lifetime. His only loss having come when they stretched him to a mile several races back. He's coming out of a nice performance last time out at Oaklawn, and here runs clear to win by nine over Toboggan and slide a horse that ran a solid third in last year's Remsen as well as the previously undefeated Plantation. Comadero is a Bay Gelding, a son of Posse from Pawnee Patty by Sir Richard Lewis, bred in Arkansas by the McDowell Farm and owned by Peter Redekop. 
Trained by Michael Stidham and ridden to victory by Robbie Alvarado, Comadero covers the 7 in 123.45. Next up, we'll head right back to Charlestown. Phillies and mares in the Sugar Maple Stakes, $250,000. Again, the two turns, seven furlongs. They're all in line once again. And they're off in the Sugar Maple Stakes. Down the side of the track, East Breaks jumps out there for the early lead. Inside of that one is Sweet Goodbye. Alongside is Call of a Lion and Pinkarella now moving up between horses. Another two and a half back to Strut the Canary, who drives up alongside Swiss Maravich. And Unforgotten is content at the back. They head into that first turn, and on the outside, short lead for Pinkarella. Down on the inside, Sweet Goodbye, trying to keep up along the rail. Second, in third is East Breaks, then back fourth on the outside is Call of a Lion. Another two and a half to Strut the Canary. Then comes Swiss Maravich, joined on the outside by Strut the Canary. There you go, the opening quarter in 23 and 3 fifth seconds. It's still Pink Gorilla. Travis Dunkelberger content on the lead by two. Sweet goodbye and J.D. Acosta, a favorite just stalking the early pace. Now on the far outside, Strut the Canary up into third, followed by East Breaks retreating in fourth. Then comes Unforgotten, another three back to call the line in Swiss Maravich. The half went in 46 and 3 fifth seconds, top of the stretch. It's still Pink Gorilla. Travis Dunkelberger at 2 to 1, strictly the one to catch. Takes a peep back as he opens up by 6. He's leaving Sweet Goodbye back in second and Strut the Canary third. It's all Pink Gorilla to win the Sugar Maple Stakes. In second is Sweet Goodbye, tight for the show, though, between Strut the Canary and Unforgotten. Unofficial winning time 123 and 1 fifth second. Pinkarella in from Florida, where last out she was fifth behind Warbling and Tar Heel Mom in the inside information at Gulfstream Park. She scores the victory over the favored Sweet Goodbye, who was shipping in from some nice races at Laurel. Philadelphia shipper Strut the Canary completes the order of the top three. The winner, Pinkarella, is a, dark, is a bay filly, a daughter of Malibu Moon from Stormy Monday by Stormcat. Bred in Kentucky by B. Wayne Hughes, owned by the Flint Ridge Stable and STD State Racing Stable, trained by Doug O'Neill and ridden to victory by Travis Dunkelberger. Pinkarella covers the 7 in 123.38. Next up, the $1 million, yes, $1 million, nine furlong Charlestown Classic. Here in the gate. And racing in the $1 million Charlestown Classic. It's acting zippy going right out for the early advantage. Fiddler's a fleet down along the inside, moves up the challenge with a rush on the far outside. There goes. Acting Zippy, an understatement. Understatement on the lead. Rate racing second is Acting Zippy. Back in third is Redding Cagliari. A gap of three or four back to Fiddler's a fleet. Then gone astray, moving up to take the fifth spot. Researcher is content to sit about six lengths off the lead and then gone astray. Another three lengths back to Awesome Gem and the early trailers are Indian Dance followed by No Advantage. As they head to the clubhouse turn, sitting outside, Acting Zippy continues to battle with understatement as those two are stride for stride for the lead. The quarter one in 23 and two fifth seconds. They head to the half mile in 46 and three. It's understatement. Holding the advantage with David Cohen, acting zipping just the three parts of a length off the lead. Redding Collier moves to the outside in third. Now gone astray on the outside as asked for a bit more. And moving up between horses, here comes the hometown favorite researcher weaving his way up the rail. He's all the way up into third. Understatement, the one to catch with Redding Collier down on the outside second. In third is researcher from the back of the pack exploding. Here comes awesome gem, the grade one. Winner coming after the pack, just four lengths off to the lead. Up the rail, gone astray, now making his move and circling out in the center of the track. Indian dancing with a chance up in the fifth. Top of the stretch, Researcher and Luis Perez strike the lead. Down on the inside, battling back. Redding Collieri down the center. Awesome gem trying to get to him, but it's Researcher looking for the repeat. Yes, Researcher gets the victory two years in a row. The $1 million Charlestown Classic. Awesome Gem is second. Back in third is Redding.
Kali Airy, and settling for fourth was Indian Dance. The unofficial winning time, 149 and four fifth seconds. They put up a lot of money, they drew an overflow field, and it was Researcher scoring his second consecutive victory in this race. He's now 10 for 14 at Charlestown, but he has done well when shipping out of town. This is a horse that's run a couple of pretty nice races when taking on New York Company as well. He scores the victory over old-timer Awesome Gem, who continues to run big race after big race for the West Point Thoroughbreds operation. He's based out in California for Craig DeLossi. He ships all over the place, and here he's ran second and picked up $200,000 for his efforts. He scores the second spot by three quarters over Redding Colliery, who was coming out of a nice Laurel win last time out. The winner researcher, kind of interesting, prior to this race, uh, he was purchased by the Kinross Corporation, which is a uh, mainly a steeplechasing operation. They run uh, mainly steeplechase horses in the mid-Atlantic and generally very high quality steeplechasers. So who's, this got a little bit of talk going about the fact that this guy may eventually find himself in the chasing environment, interestingly enough. But researcher whose pedigree is relatively modest, but uh, has really turned out to be a nice horse. He has now scored this race two years in a row and pushed his earnings for his career well over a million dollars. Researcher is a Bay Gelding. He is a six-year-old son of Too Smart from Wild Magnolia by Appalachie. Bred in Virginia by the Virginia Tech Foundation, owned by the Ken Ross Corporation, trained by Jeff Runco. He is now 10 for 14 at Charlestown. Wow. And ridden to victory by Luis Perez. Researcher covers the 9 and 149.94. We'll continue now with stakes racing action at Hawthorne. Saturday afternoon stakes features fillies and mares in the 60 sales. She's in, they're all in the gate. They're off. Stumbling at the start was Fighter Wing. Jessica's back going for the lead between horses. Peach Brew moving out and from the outside, here's Life at 10. Never retreat, down along the rail, close up fourth. Fighter Wing has recovered and moving up into fifth and now in tight quarters. A fleet to see this three wide sixth. And then it's four lanes back to missing six in the early trailer, Starship Angel. Six and a half furlongs to go as they make their way to the back stretch. Jessica's back has the lead by almost two. Life at 10 out there, second. Towards the inside, Peach Brew is third. A fleet to seat out there, fourth. Fighter Wing still in tight quarters, fifth. Never retreat down along the rail, six. Five and a half behind the leader. Three more back to missing six to her inside is Starship Angel. Less than five furlongs to go in the 60 sales. Your leader, Jessica's back, and Jessica's back holds firm a length. Life at 10 has been chasing every step of the way towards the inside, Peach Brew. A fleet to see three wide, fighter wing between horses, and then it's never retreat. Missing six starts to move from the back of the pack, and trailing once again, Starship Angel. Three furlongs out, Jessica's back holding firm a neck. Life at 10, now moving up to pressure the leader. Now these two have drawn clear by five. Moving up on the far outside, Missing Six continues to rally up, and Starship Angel also is gaining ground. They come off the turn and straighten away. Life at 10 on the outside puts her nose in front. Jessica's back trying to re-rally towards the inside. Missing Six is third. Starship Angel fourth with a 16th to go. Life at 10 on the outside. Jessica's back is trying to fight back along the inside. Life at 10, Jessica is back. Life at 10 won it. Life at 10 beat Jessica's back, and then it was Missing Six and Starship Angel in the 2010 60 sales at Hawthorne. Life at 10 in from New York, scoring her fourth in a row. She won an allowance race, the Snit Stakes, the rare treat, and has now won the 60 sales, a grade three from just off the pace, going away by a length over Jessica is back. The speed in the field resisted, but uh, could not hold off to score. Missing six completes the order of the top three. Life at 10 is a chestnut mare, a daughter of Malibu Moon from Ra Ra, six boom ba by Rahi. Bred in Kentucky by Nickelback Farm and owned by Cynthia DeBartolo. Trained by Todd Fletcher and ridden to victory by Michael Bays. Life at 10 covers the 9 and 151.02. We will head now north of the border. Canada has begun its Woodbine meeting for the season. The stakes feature on Sunday afternoon. A grade 3 for fillies and mares sprinting 6 in the whimsical.
they're off in the whimsical stakes. Dancing All-Star and Silver Z sprint out of there. Then we have uh, Tribal Bell in third position and uh, Glitter Rocks is fourth. Authentic Hat improves to the inside, fifth. She's the umpire, is in a sixth position and Proud Heiress trails early and Dancing All-Star out sprints Silver Z for the early lead. Dancing All-Star ripped off a quarter in 21 and four. And it's Dancing All-Star as they head into the far turn. Silver Z is taken to the outside now. Tribal Bell back three and a half lengths off the lead. Authentic Hat has improved steadily at the rail. And they come over to the quarter pole. And they're ganging up on Dancing All-Star now. Here comes Silver Z coming right back. Tribal Bell is set down. Authentic Hat rides the rails. They're at the top of the stretch. And they ran a half and a vicious 44 and 4. And here comes the closers. Proud Eris has come from out of the clouds. Silver Z has taken the lead. Dancing All-Star has had enough. Silver Z, Proud Eris on the far outside is surging in between horses. Tribal Bell, a three-horse win photo. It's tight between Proud Eris and Tribal Bell in that win photo. Silver Z was third in the whimsical. Proud heiress that gets the victory here. Another one that uh, is in from uh, out of town, as is often the case at this time of year. Proud heiress spent her winter time this year at Turfway, as she did last year. In fact, last year she won the wishing well and then just missed in the Queen Stakes. As a matter of fact, she did the same thing here in 2010, having won the wishing well and being nosed in the Queen Stakes at Turfway Park, heading back up north of the border and gets the nose victory this time over Tribal Bell with Silver Z back in the third spot. She may have had a little bit of a fitness advantage as most of the horses in the field had not run since Woodbine's meeting of last year. So obviously spending a little bit of time in training, even if it is uh, fairly light winter time action down at Turfway, keeps her fit and ready to go. She won this race last year off, or I'm sorry, was third in this race last year off of that similar pattern coming in. And obviously this year turns the tables. Proud heiress is a chestnut mare. A daughter of Broken Vow from Raise a Carter by Dr. Carter, bred in Kentucky by Respite Farm and owned by the Breeders, trained by Wayne Mogey and ridden to victory by Chantal Sutherland. Proud Eris covers the 6 and 109.71. We'll pause for a brief message when we return. We'll be heading to California and then wrapping things up in New York. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We'll continue now in Northern California. Golden Gate Saturday stakes feature three-year-old fillies on the turf in the Golden Poppy. Seven to two, number one, Jules J. They're ready to go. Racing. Kalula wins the start from the outside gate. Has the head in the front through the opening strides. Now moves about a length clear. From Antares World, who's going to take up a stalking role. In third position on the cover with a lap to go, then Jules J, six lengths off the early speed, brought to Justice and Bleach Blonde the last couple as they race by the seven-eighths pole. Kalula, the leader, by just over two lengths to Antares World. On the cover third on the outside as they sweep into the first turn, Jules J up on the inside. She's a joint third, now four lengths off the lead. Then comes the grey Bleach Blonde in advance of Brought to Justice, heading onto the back stretch and Kalula clear by two and a half lengths. Favourite Antares World 
world running second. Then comes on the cover, Jules J. Bleach Blonde is six off the lead and a couple of lengths brought to justice. Running along past the half mile pole, Kalula makes play. But Antares World is eating into her advantage, pulls within a half length and just over a length away to on the cover as Antares World is level pegging into the second turn with Kalula. Back fourth, Jules J. Bleach Blonde is fifth and brought to justice last of the six. At the three-eighths pole, Kalula just in advance of Antares World, followed after a length by on the cover. Jules J. trailing up nicely on the inside, Bleach Blonde within three lengths of the front. With a quarter mile left to go, Antares Ray's World confidently handled by Alvarado. Moves to a one-length lead at the top of the stretch. Jules J now in the clear. She's in the red shadow roll, moving into a joint second with Bleach Blonde. And there the hopes. With 150 yards left to go, he shakes up the leader. And Tare's World responds gamely kicks on and will be much too good. It's Antares World taking the golden poppy convincingly. Three lengths over Bleach Blonde and a neck to Jules J. Long gap away, Kalula fourth from Brought to Justice and on the cover. And Taris World getting the victory. She's five for nine lifetime. This was her first turf victory. In her prior turf try, she had been a close-up fifth in the Providencia at Santa Anita. Here she gets the victory from just off the pace rallying to win off by three over Bleach Blonde with Jules J back in the third spot. The winner in Terrace World is a dark bayer brown daughter of Takarki from Alisher's World by Spinning World. Bred in California by Mr. and Mrs. Larry D. Williams and owned by the breeders, trained by Stephen Specht and ridden to victory by Frank Alvarado. The winner of this year's California Oaks scores on the turf and Terrace World in a covering the mile in the 16th and 144.25. We'll head to Southern California now and wrap up the Santa Anita uh, winter meeting, winter into spring, I suppose. Uh, three stakes races over the weekend, kicking things off on Saturday afternoon. Phillies and mares in the grade two Santa Barbara on turf. Yep. Claire DeLune goes in. Gates closed. All set now. Feel sent on their way in the Santa Barbara. On the inside, we have Tuscan Evening going on to make her own pace. She's joined now by a clear de Lune on the outside, and between those two is Restless Soul, and general consensus has been taken back to last. Coming to the top of the stretch first time round, and the favourite Tuscan Evening going to try to make every polar winning one out here as she goes on to lead them by just under two. On the inside, we have Restless Soul. A Claire de Lune has raced up alongside of her, and general consensus at the back. They've taken closer order now, no more than four lengths would cover them all. Under the wire, one lap left to go, and Tuscan Evening just ambling them along here by just over a length. Restless Soul is going to move up a little closer in second. A Claire de Lune is on the outside, and still general consensus, the early trailer. They head to the three-quarter pole now, and it's still Tuscan Evening. Couldn't have it any more her own way out here. He is just twitching back and forth. Rafael Bejarano just has her on an easy lead out here, has it by just over a length. Restless Soul not going to put any pressure on her, neither is Eclair de Lune on the far side. They're quite content to just let Tuscan Evening breeze along on the lead. And the trailer general consensus been no change, still four lengths would cover them all. They run past the half mile pole now and it's still Tuscan Evening in front by three parts of a length. They start to pick up the tempo a little now. There goes Restless Soul and she's finally going to put some pressure on Tuscan Evening as they start to sprint into the turn now. A length and a half to a clear de Lune and general consensus. So they come to the top of the lane now and it's a sprint for home. Tuscan Evening still travelling very easily. Rafael Bayorano has not moved on Tuscan Evening. They're still going well. In the second spot is Restless Soul along the inside side general consensus at Claire de Lune. The other three line up to take a shot at Tuscan Evening, but Rafael Bayrano shakes the reins at her now. General consensus is going to come to chase her home. It's Tuscan Evening, though, just striding home. She's exuding class again today. Tuscan Evening never took a deep breath, won it easily. General consensus second. Behind that was Restless Soul and the Claire de Lune. A couple of years ago, it would seem that this race would have been overfilled, but uh, kind of light on the Philly and Mare Turf Division this year. And Tuscan Evening goes to four in a row, five of her last six, the other having been a good second behind Ventura in the grade one matriarch, of course. Ventura retired, and Tuscan Evening now looks like the dominant Philly or Mare Turfer on the West Coast, scoring on the front end by a length over general consensus with Restless Soul back in third. 
Tuscan Evening is Bay Mare, a daughter of Oasis Dream from the Faraway Tree by Suave Dancer. Bred in Ireland by Haskell and Valiant Studs, owned, uh, owned by William de Berg and trained by Jerry Hollendorfer. Ridden to victory by Rafael Bejarano. Tuscan Evening covers the mile and a quarter on the turf in two minutes, point two two. Next up, we'll head back to California, the downhill turf course for the Grade 3 San Simeon. And away they go to a good beginning. Trumpet player Jay bounces out the gate and is sent along early, will open up three lengths. Mr. Gruff's coming to cut into that lead from second, then it's Ever A Friend along the inside Cherokee Heaven. Victor's Cry's right there too, and Tiz West is on the far side with cannon eyes. They run to the half mile pole, trumpet player Jay by a length, Mr. Gruff down at the rail. On the far side now we have Canonize and Tiz West. They have been followed by Cherokee Heaven, ever a friend the Grey. Only four lengths off these leaders and Victor's Cry, last of a compact field. Down the hill they come now and Mr. Gruff can wait no more. Mr. Gruff picks up the running and kicks on for home. He leads the length to trumpet player Jay. Tiz West is in the third spot. Canonized between them. Cherokee Heaven at the rail. Then Victor's Cry and Ever a Friend. They are bunched as they turn for home now. Mr. Gruff still travelling comfortably on the lead. Hasn't been asked yet. Let's see. He's shaking along now. And he opens up a length and a half. Ever a Friend finishing strongly in the centre of the track. Then Canonized and behind that Victor's Cry. But it's Mr. Mr. Graf finding more on the lead. Victor's Cry coming to chase him home from second. But a very impressive effort. Mr. Graf never in doubt. Mr. Graf and Joel Rosario easy in the San Simeon. Victor's Cry was second. Ever a friend third and then canonized. Mr. McGruff picking up the victory in this race for the second consecutive year. He has now won four in a row and five of his last six, including running five for six on this six and a half furlong downhill turf course. Now, he won this race last year, has only raced once since that time. It was a prep race on March of, in mid-March of this year. Set him up perfectly. He scores by two and a quarter lengths over Victor's Cry with Ever a Friend completing the third spot with a rallying move. The win, Mr. Gruff is a dark bay or brown gelded son of Mr. Greeley from Rough by Clever Trick. Bred in Kentucky by Robert Spiegel and owned by Gary Broad. Trained by Ron Ellis and ridden to victory by Joel Rosario. Mr. Gruff covers the six and a half on the downhill turf in 111.53. From six and a half furlongs to a mile and three quarters. Next up, we'll wrap up the Santa Anita winter spring meet with their traditional closing stake. The Grade 2 San Juan Capistrano at a mile and three furlongs on turf. Goes in, gates closed, all set. Feel for the San Juan Capistrano sent on the marathon journey. Tappet Light breaks smartly on the far side, now going to be overtaken by Muhannock. Along the inside, we have Skelly Town going up to race in third. Pace just steady early on. Stalingrad's taken a strong hold in the white cap on the far side. Here's Bourbon Bay settling down in the fifth position, been followed by Princess Taylor, who's five lengths off the leaders. Then we come back to Falcon Rock, up alongside Unusual Suspect. Big gap of five back to Yodlin Dan, and as usual, Rump is the trailer. Rump has got to be a good 18 off this leader. Down the hill they come now and taking a hold of the bit and sprinting away as Stalingrad. He's really tugging away now. He's keen to go on. Obviously going way too fast though. He's opened up a big five, six length advantage here. Tappet Light is in second. Bourbon Bay very sensibly just sitting back allowing those first two to go on with it. On the inside comes Muhannock. Just in behind Muhannock here is Falcon Rock who's racing towards the rear with Skelly Town. Princess Taylor, unusual suspect. And then we come back to Yodlin Dan and Romp is last by four. Past the sands first time round and Stalingrad. Riders trying to slow him down right now and actually is slowing him down but he's still well clear. He's got to be a good six lengths in front. In the second spot we have Tappet Light and they have been followed by Muhannock. Here's Bourbon Bay just cantering along in the fourth spot, eight lengths off that leader. They've been followed by Princess Taylor in the red cap. Skelly Town is down at the rail. Falcon Rock racing in behind them. Then we come back to Yodling Dan who's back third last. Unusual suspect second last and Romp still in no hurry. The trailer has still got to be a good 15 off this leader. 
They go down the back stretch and no turning back for Stalingrad now. He's committed to go on with it and it's Stalingrad still winging out here. He's opened up a big seven lengths on him now. Tap it light to second and then there's another big gap of six lengths back to Skelly Town. Alongside of that comes Muhannock. Bourbon Bay on the far side has gone up to race in the four spot. Bourbon Bay still on a tight hold. Down at the rail we have Falcon Rock. On the far side, Yodel and Dan is going for an early run wide out, then Princess Taylor in behind that unusual suspect and romp. They come into the top of the lane and Stalingrad, not surprisingly, can find no more. He's gone. Tap it like the new leader. And now let's see, Bourbon Bay is hooked to the outside. Skelly Town's in with a chance and then Falcon Rock. Homeward bound in the San Juan Capistrano and here's Bourbon Bay still under a hand right in the centre of the track. He strikes the front. Unusual suspect, Skelly Town running a big one on the inside. Bourbon Bay, Skelly Town, unusual suspect, but Bourbon Bay will win it. And Bourbon Bay has won the San Juan to unusual suspect, Skelly Town and Falcon Rock finish fourth. Bourbon Bay completes the sweep after having won an allowance race early in the year. He scores the San Luis Obispo, the San Luis Rey, and now the San Juan Capistrano for rooters on the turf at Santa Anita over the winter time. Bourbon Bay scores by a half a length from off the pace over the late moving usual, unusual suspect with Skelly Town pressing the pace in the early going and uh, assuming the lead near the top of the stretch but unable to hold on and settling for third. The winner, Bourbon Bay, is a bay-gelded son of Sligo Bay from Coral Necklace by Conquistador Cielo. Bred in Kentucky by Adina Springs and owned by David and Jill Herensberger, trained by Neil Drysdale and ridden a victory by Rafael Bejarano, Bourbon Bay covers the mile and three quarters in 244.52. We'll head back home to New York. Aqueduct having two stakes over the weekend. First, it was graded stakes racing for fillies and mares on Saturday in the seven furlong distaff. And the rough. Thunder's Dove, Hourglass, and Tar Heel Mom. Tar Heel Mom, short lead. Thunder's Dove right up there trying to mix it up early on, but the quickest of them all is Tar Heel Mom, who now gets a one length lead over Thunder's Dove, second by two. Matchless surrender third on the outside. And then it's Hourglass and Just Whistle Dixie is the early trailer. Tar Heel Mom, now the leader by a length and a half. Thunder's Dove had to step on the brakes earlier, but now takes to the outside for a clear shot at Tar Heel Mom. The opening quarter, 22 seconds flat. Hot pace here, and the Tar Heel Mom opens up again. Thunder's Dove took a failed run at the lead. It is dropping back now on the outside. It's Match a surrender down toward the inside. Comes Hourglass. Just Whistle Dixie is the trailer starting to come alive as they come to the top of the stretch. Tar Hill Mom about to be confronted by Hourglass as the field turns for home. Matchless surrender third. Just Whistle Dixie. Top of the stretch now. And Tar Hill Mom is fully extended. Holds on to the lead. Ramon Dominguez really working on her. She's responding. Holds on by two. Hourglass still chasing her at the 16th pole followed by Matchless Arinda and Just Whistle Dixie. Tire Heel Mom took them all the way on the lead. One by two, Hourglass second. Close for third there, Matchless Arinda and Just Whistle Dixie. Tar Heel Mom gets to the front and never looks back. I had thought that Matchless Arinda might be able to out-sprint her in the early going, but uh, Tar Heel Mom broke on top, never looked back. She was given a little bit of a breather in that second fraction. She went 25.38 uh, after going 22.80 to open the race, and uh, obviously uh, getting a little bit of a breather after going 44 and, three, uh, 44 and 4 early was all she needed. She had plenty to hold off Hourglass at the end with Matchless Arinda completing the top three. After running on board and all three on the board and all three graded stakes sprints for Phillies and Mares at Gulfstream, Tar Heel Mom returns to New York and scores the victory. She is a dark bay or brown five-year-old daughter of Flatter from Perpetual Light by Sunny's Halo, making her a half-sister to Scrappy T. Of course, Ramon Dominguez earned some uh, notoriety on in the Preakness stakes. Was Ramon taking the call here for uh, trainer Stanley Huff? 
The winner trained in Kentucky by Ups and Downs Farm is owned by Alex Rankin, trained by Stanley Hufford, and the victory by Ramon Dominguez. Tar Heel Mom covers the 7 and 124.51. Next up, Sunday's stakes feature in New York was for state breads, and it drew a pretty solid, if relatively short, field of older horses going nine. We'll head back to Aqueduct for the Packets Landing. And they're off. And it's Mantica, and there goes Mighty Morris. Mighty Morris. Up to take the early lead as they race for the first turn. Manteca is alongside, running in second. Pocket Cowboys has come out running third. And then it's Rafino who's racing fourth early on, followed by Ichabod Crane. Three lengths back to the unhurried Naughty New Yorker and Dr. DFC. Dr. DFC trailing the field as they make their way into the backstretch run. 24 and 3 was the opening quarter mile. Sensible pace up front here. Mighty Morris, light pressure from Manteca. Just in behind Pocket Cowboys, and now begins to tug away. He's eager to get up on the outside. Naughty New Yorker making a move now with that pace slow. Jean-Luc Samin is sending him up to join the vanguard. And Ichabod Crane is there. So down the back stretch run, the quarter in 24 and 3 fifths seconds. Get the half in 49 and 1. Monty Morris and Manteca now. Those two matching strides for the lead. Not a New Yorker has moved into third position with a half mile to go. Pocket Cowboy asked for a bit down toward the inside. Ichabod Crane is moving sweetly. Ichabod Crane now starting to launch a bid on the far outside as they round the far turn. Dr. DFC and Rufino. It is wide open here with three furlongs to go. Three quarters went in one, 12, and four. And they're moving toward the top of the stretch now. And Manteca continues to share the lead with Mighty Morris. Ichabod Crane is third. And Naughty New Yorker is tailed off in the fourth, off the turn, into the stretch. Mighty Morris and Manteca still together with one furlong to go. Ichabod Crane all out drive, three lengths behind, not a New Yorker. Up now third again, into the final 16th. Mighty Morris holding on tenaciously. Manteca fighting him all the way down to the line. Not a New Yorker third, and Mighty Morris won it. Mighty Morris and Manteca one, two around the track. And not a New Yorker third. Mighty Morris gets the victory. Nice effort by this horse who really came to hand over the winter time on the inner. He's never missed the exacta since heading into the Tommy Bush barn. It was a good second last time out in his stakes debut to Ichabod Crane in the Kings Point. Here turns the tables and scores by a game half length over Manteca. These two went at it for the entire nine furlongs and both of them ran very, very good races. Mighty Morris just surging at the end. Naughty New Yorker who was well back made a big mid-pack move you know, up the back stretch, dropped out of it apparently, and then re rallied to complete the top three. The winner, Mighty Morris, a gray gelded son of Wheel Away from Bit of Powder by Talc, was bred in New York by Five Ways Farm and is owned by the breeder, trained by Tom Bush, and ridden to victory by Channing Hill. Mighty Morris covers the 9 and 150.06. That'll wrap up this edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll be able to join us again next week as we take a look at stakes racing action from around the country. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.